I feel like a bat in the best possible way. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Good evening. <laughs> I know I can't be alone in this, but around September 1st, when the leaves begin to fall, I start gravitating towards dressing like alternate universe vampire Willow, which is also kind of like party city vampire adjacent. It's a little silly. <laughs> and where the one and only problem with this in my eyes arises is that I also like to dress more like this style that my friend Kathleen very appropriately calls a princess in a silly goofy mood. Around the fall and winter months, this does become a bit of a dilemma. Why must the facets of my personality go together like a golden retreat? Retriever and a black cat. But wait, Golden Retriever, Black Cat. Is this one of the most recognizable duos known to man? Okay, we all know it's not that deep. I, this week, just want to make the goth princess dress of my dreams. <laughs> if you've watched this channel for any length of time this summer, then you'll know that I'm very into whimsy goth and gothic styles in general and also very much medieval revival. So I want to pull from all those different genres and make the ultimate gothy princessy layering dress. Here's what I'm thinking for a design. This dress is pretty simple and not too maximalist for once. It's partially inspired by this dress by I Do Declare. This skirt that Makira Tours made in one of her videos, Arwen's sleeves, just always, like in general, and snakes. It's a full-length dress with a very voluminous three-tiered skirt, a gathered bust bodice with a deep neckline, fitted at the waist, and some wacky medieval-inspired princess sleeves. But because I am very much still a maximalist, it'll have a sheer snake print across the bodice and sleeves. And for that Arwen touch, I also want to make some bat sleeves that tie on at the elbow for more styling options. I keep saying Arwen, but it's also very much like Morticia Adams. Although I I feel like mixing those two characters is kind of the entire premise of this video. So now that we understand each other just a little bit better, let's move on to patterning. Okay, so patterning this thing out should be pretty simple, at least in terms of everything about this dress. I've made something similar before. Hopefully, things will be relatively easy mode this week. So for fabrics, I am finally using this fabric that I got at Joann's like over two months ago, probably. If you've seen my Dragon Course video, you know what this is. It's like this sheer black fabric that has beautiful little snakes. And then for the rest of it, I got a frick ton of black organza. I um, <laughs> might have forgotten exactly how much I got of this. The other thing that I want to do, because I apparently like suffering, is to put buttons all the way down the front of the design. And that is because this is my year of versatility. I'm trying to create garments and other things that I can wear in more than one way, layer. For that reason, I'm also thinking about making like the little drapey sleeves removable so that, again, options. Do you feel me mentally setting aside like an entire day just to do the buttons on this? Um. Not looking forward to that. So first step, let's drape a bodice. That didn't seem natural, did it? <laughs> Too bad, I don't care. So for this, I wanna to try to pattern a cup that kind of gathers underneath the bust. Uh, I want a very good neckline plunge here. Just whew, all the way. Boop. <sighs> Can you tell I don't know what I'm doing? This isn't the first garment like this I've patterned with a gathered bust, but every single time I do this, this particular cut eludes me for whatever reason. <laughs> Ow. Whenever I do this, I'm like, does this even look good? Do not judge my poor draping technique. Eh, good enough. <laughs> I would say that we have reached good enough. Snip, snip. Okay. I'm gonna do this in a time lapse because I don't wanna run out of camera battery. And I'm glad I did because I stood in front of my mannequin the whole time. Anyways, be proud of me because from there I did proceed to cut and pin together a quick mock-up, but this was my Sunday night prep work, so it was getting pretty late, and I really didn't know what I thought about this at first. The night of, I really didn't like it. So much so that I felt I needed to lie on the floor in protest. That will definitely fix the problem. I don't know about you, but I think that other Kira could use a little break from patterning to calm her noodle a bit. So let me use this opportunity to tell you about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build websites, portfolios, sell your products online, and ultimately grow more powerful. Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates to suit whatever design aesthetic your brand needs. Whether it be poppy and modern, sleek and professional, or having the darkness to pierce a thousand suns. For my portfolio, I am personally a big fan of tools like automatic image scaling that allow me to be lazy because all you have to do is upload a full gallery of your work and then Squarespace does the scaling and positioning for you. And since it sucks, 
When branding doesn't feel personal enough, I'm also a big fan of how you can customize everything from text to colors to icons and even website pages. And you can even drop in brand relevant media with audio, video, and image blocks. And finally, I'm a really big fan of their e-commerce platform because they have all the tools you need whether you're a more serious merchant or a little bit more of a casual seller like me. And if you fall in that more casual category, you can even link your store to a print-on-demand service like I do for more hands-free and sustainable selling. Um, class, raise your hand. Anyone who's a loser who doesn't know anything about graphic design. <coughs> and if you're anything like me and you identify with that skit, no worries. Squarespace offers award-winning 24-7 customer support so that you can reach them any time of the day or night on your schedule. So if you would like to become the master of your domain and build a website or portfolio, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you as always Squarespace for sponsoring this bottle of black nail polish masquerading as a YouTube channel. Now let's get back to it. So this was kind of bamboozling me last night, but under the light of a new day, I've kind of decided that it's pretty much okay. I did a couple of fit tweaks, a couple of things to make it less wonky. I also have neglected to update my set to spooky season colors, so um, there we go. So now we are on to patterning the skirts and the sleeves. Thankfully for the sleeves, I think I'm gonna just use the exact same patterns that I used for the sleeves for these moth boleros because I don't know, that's just the sleeve mood that I'm in. <laughs> There's a couple of tweaks that I wanna make to those because the fit wasn't great in some areas. I think I'm gonna add some elastic in there so that it actually like stays in place, does what it's supposed to do because it kept slipping down. For the skirt, the skirt from this is kind of inspired by Makara Tour's like big voluminous purple skirt. I think it was from one of her like homecoming dress videos. These take so much fabric. I ended up getting about 15 yards for this project and I'm glad I did because since I double layered the sleeves and the bodice, I used roughly 13 yards for wow. this dress. So the way Makara explained the skirt is you have a 10 yard tier of fabric gathered into a five yard tier of fabric gathered into a two yard tier of fabric, hence the need for so much fabric. And then the width of each strip kind of depends on your height. And then that open side will be where our buttons go. But since I prefer a sleeker silhouette, I'm opting for a circle skirt for the top tier instead of a gathered one so that I can get a cleaner waistline. So I'm thinking <laughs> from the waist to maybe that is about, I think we can call it 23 inches. Scratch that, I ended up making it more like 14 inches to make the proportions of the tiers look more even. I think I probably will wear this dress with heels. So I'm going to account for that too. I want it to be like full length. I just rewatched the part of Makara's video where she made this skirt and I'm exhausted just thinking about it and I'm also kind of getting flashbacks to my pine tree dress, which if you've seen that video, you'll know making that skirt was traumatic. <laughs> Um, let's make the first layer of our deep dish pizza skirt, aka the circle skirt layer. You'll first need to take your waist measurement and ironically divide it by pi to get your waist diameter. I folded my fabric four times to pattern out just one quadrant, so I used the radius in the corner of the pizza slice there and just marked out the length I wanted the skirt to be all around. I then used the other corner of the circle to cut out another skirt since I wanted the top tier to be two layers, and when you unfold it, you get this. Again, ignore that it's too long, I was foolish and had to cut it shorter later, but this is the general idea. I then contemplated going outside to pattern the two tiers of the skirt so that I would have enough room to cut and, you know, enjoy that brisk autumn weather, but upon feeling the slightest gust of wind, I realized that that was a stupid idea, and I resigned myself to my indoor cutting fate. This took forever, like, I don't even want to talk about it, but here I am cutting out 10 yards of fabric at an 18 inch width for the lowest tier and now I'm cutting out 5 yards of fabric at a 15 inch width for the mid tier. So I just want to show you guys one thing. Oh no. 10 yards baby. Yep wait to gather this. Oh yeah, this is me finally realizing my mistake for the top tier and cutting it shorter. Yay. And I also French seamed those pieces so I wouldn't have to deal with them later. If you're wondering how to French seam, what you do is you take a baguette and then you just start putting some pastrami inside. Okay, silly. I'll go over it for real later on. Now it's time to gather all of this. I estimate that this will take no less than two hours. Let's see how accurate that is. Well, it turns out that was actually pretty accurate because it took me more like five, but I think that does include assembling the full skirt. Who can remember? Anyways, I ran all of that fabric through my machine on the longest running stitch length, which means now we gather. 
This is where the whole, this activity taking no less than two hours factors in. So I gathered and pinned up that first layer, which actually wasn't too bad. I performed a swoosh test, it passed, so I sewed it up, and finished the inside seam by trimming away the excess and burning away that raw edge with some fire. fire. Then it was on to the bottom tier, which was, in fact, the bane of my existence. One eternity later. The time lapse just keeps going. Okay, I swear I'm about to sew this up, but consider. Fashion? Hello? I feel incredible. It's giving red carpet Hell's Moving Castle cosplay. Um, anyways. Then I finally went about sewing up that hefty lass, which as you may guess, also took one eternity. Okay, are you guys ready? You're not ready. It is exactly as flowy, dramatic as I wanted it to be. Oh my gosh, guys. I feel like a bat in the best possible way. Bat! Fashion, baby. <laughs> Anyways, I did not expect this first full day to be about the skirt. I usually do bodices first just because they tend to be a little bit challenging me, but it's probably good that I did do the skirt first because whenever I made my pine tree dress, the skirt did take an entire day. So I kind of uh, <laughs> took that into account this time with this skirt and I gave myself a whole day to do it. Hello, welcome to bodice and sleeves day. Hopefully. <laughs> so the bodice mock-up was good to go, but when it came time to cut out my sleeves, I couldn't find this puff sleeve pattern due to the unrivaled organizational skills of past Kira. So I had to make a new one and it was okay. Basic sleeve pattern, we have sleeve top, there's the upper arm, there's the elbow poof, and then that is the lower arm. Pretty basic, it comes together like this. And then for the more medieval inspired drapey sleeve, I think I wanna have it attach on and off. So for that, I think I'm going to have a little ribbon at the top and then have the flowy drapey sleeve off of that. That way it can just tie on right below my elbow and then hopefully give me that same effect without it being like a permanent part of the dress. Do you see that guys? Do you see that? It's versatility. I used one of my failed skirt attempts as a base for my bat sleeves, which actually worked surprisingly well. Everything that was sheer also got at least two layers of organza to stabilize it and make it a little darker, and the front pieces on the bodice got three layers. And when I cut out the bicep portion of the sleeve, I used this sheer stretchy fabric. I cut off an old crop top and saved, which I very much feel justifies my rat mentality. See? This is why you should never throw anything out. Hi there, it is a little bit later. I just did my first little fitting test on the bodice and there are quite a few fit issues, mostly that it is way too big. <laughs> the general idea is there. It's also a little bit challenging for me because I'm trying to make this like not such a fitted garment. Most of the stuff that I make is really tight because I make a lot of bodices and corsetry and that sort of thing. So this is kind of new territory for me to make something that's like flattering and kind of sleek, but still not the tightest fit ever. Especially with like a gathered bust, you guys know. You guys know, I struggle with the bust area. This is a safe space for all of you who also struggle with the bust area. You're amongst friends. This is how the fit is looking so far. It's not too bad, but as you can see, this needs to be kind of taken up. This needs to be a little bit tighter on the side. Of course, I need to figure out exactly how I want this to overlap because we are doing buttons. So I have a little bit of excess on both sides to figure that out. I didn't go into this completely stupid. Through the magic of editing, let's see if I can get this a little bit closer to my vision. Okay, now I think we're getting somewhere. This is looking a lot better, feeling a lot better. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. But remember, I'm a Libra, so we really will just have to see, won't we? <laughs> this is gonna have to do. 
To assemble the bodice, once I got those gathers how I wanted them, I stitched them down as quickly as humanly possible because I was sick of dealing with them, but for comfort and to avoid having to put in a lining, I finished the rest of it off with French seeds. And the best food analogy I could think of is obviously a pierogi. You want the glistening, golden look of a pierogi on the outside, so you tuck that messy goodness inside a delicious pocket of dough for a clean presentation. Uh, in, in case that doesn't make sense, which it probably doesn't. You sew wrong sides together, clean up that edge, flip it right sides together, then sew those right sides, and flip it again. And this makes that nice little pocket to hide those messy seams. Y do you see where the pierogi's coming into it? Do you get it? No? I spent way too long trying to find an actual food analogy for a French seam, and I just could not find one. I did my best. Anyways, next came those dreaded sleeves. They only made me nervous because I wanted to use elastic on these points this time to help them stay in place, so I measured some elastic strips to length, and oddly enough, the elastic on the puff sleeve came together pretty well. I just had to pull the elastic tight while I sewed it on with a zigzag stitch, but sewing elastic on to the elbow puff with elastic actually fitted to my elbow proved to be pretty much impossible. I'm telling you, I tried so many times to do it and it conquered me. I couldn't do it. In the end, I sewed on a long piece of elastic as tight as I could and cut it to length. It doesn't fit perfectly to my elbow, but it's kind of stretchy. The rest of the sleeve came together pretty easily, but I did most of it off camera because I really wasn't having it at this point. We have sleeves now. I wanted the forearm part of the sleeve to fit tightly around my wrist. I decided to give it kind of like a slash open medieval type of feel. So I kind of cut those down to size and then finished them off with some like organza ribbon, kind of using that as bias tape. That way I can simply put a button around my wrist and have it fastened tightly and have that sleek arm silhouette. Yesterday in a mad dash before I had to leave the house to go somewhere, I finished off the two front edges of the skirt where the buttons are going to go with some velvet ribbon and then with some organza ribbon. Literally just sewing as fast as I could like a mad woman because I had about 15 minutes to do this. And that's because I knew I would have a little bit of time that afternoon to sew all of the buttons on. I did that in a store parking lot in my car. This is what it has come to. Sewing in my car. I also worked on it a little bit whenever I was hanging out with friends, but I didn't record that. Then you know how I was like mentally setting aside an entire day to do the finishings on this? Yep, it took a whole day. <laughs> Lightning round. First, we're focusing on the bat sleeves. First, you're gonna take your scissors, feed it an organza snack. Then it will be fed through the scalding presser of death to create some bias tape that's actually not bias tape because it's not cut on the bias. Then the not bias tape will be tediously pinned around the edge of the bat wing and stabbed together with thread. The other edges will receive a rolled hem off camera. You'll then repeat that process and then ties will magically appear on them because they were also sewn on off camera. Sorry, it was just a lot to film, but at least when they tie on, they look like this. Wow. Anyways, the next order of business is finishing up the front and adding buttonholes. So here's me cutting that front closure to length and finishing it up with some spare trim I had lying around. And just when we thought the sewing project was going well, <laughs> no it wasn't. This is the day my buttonhole foot woke up and chose sabotage. If you review the footage very closely, you can see my buttonhole foot completely betraying me and me opting to do them manually with a zigzag stitch. So after manually sewing all of the buttonholes onto the bodice, I thought to myself, do I really want to repeat that process 20 times on that skirt? Uh, no. So I didn't. <laughs> Listen, since I finished off the buttonhole side with this velvet trim, I figured it would be strong enough for me to just cut buttonholes in two. So that's what I did. What are you gonna do to me? You're just another person on the internet and you don't know where I live. I just finished all of those holes up with a little bit of my favorite crafting material, obviously fire. Oh, and that's strange. In this clip, you can see there's suddenly ties right under the bust area. How'd that get in there? Finally, to fully assemble this dress, I just did a little French seam between the skirt and the bodice so that it was actually comfortable to wear. Oh, did I say this dress was fully assembled? I lied. There were still six buttons to sew on. Here's me doing that. And with that, it's time for me to go and awkwardly pose in my backyard and for all of my neighbors to wonder what the heck I'm doing.
Okay, so since I designed this garment to be versatile, I figured I'd do a little styling segment to show all of the ways that it can be worn. First of all, all the skirt buttons can be undone to show more of the underskirt and give it more of a flowy silhouette. By the way, here I'm just wearing my thrifted full length circle skirt underneath this. I didn't go and make a different skirt off camera. Then all of the bodice buttons can be undone with it still tied under the bust to give it an empire cut. This makes it look a lot flowier, less fitted, and more like a jacket or a Victorian dressing gown. I think this way it also fits really nicely with a whimsy goth aesthetic, which you guys know I am obsessed with at the moment. <laughs> Moving on, one of the main reasons I made this is I need a neutral medieval dress to layer under and over things at Ren Faire's because I have exactly zero of those. So I thought this would look great layered over the vampire waistcoat I made, either tied in the middle under the bust, completely open like a jacket. And for Ren Faire purposes, of course, you've got to complete the look with those bat sleeves. Or I think it's also cute with the dragon bolero and bracers I made from my dragon corset. I actually really like this outfit and it's definitely a contender for my fall Ren Faire look. I can't wait to be tripped over by at least eight different people and get the hem of this dress completely covered in mud. That's gonna be real fun. I also tried to dress it down incrementally starting with this outfit. It's just a long ruched skirt, a green crop top, and a corset vest. I think it's decently cute, although not the most wearable in a more casual setting. So then I dressed it down even more with some leather shorts, a crimson crop top, and some thigh highs for something more modern and actually casual. And I do really like this outfit. I think if I was going to a friend's house for a party or something, I could dress it down like this and use it as more of a jacket, which is precisely the kind of versatility I was going for. I think the the fact that this does look like it could be purchased at like a Hot Topic does help the wearability factor here, but I also think it's really cute and very dramatic. Overall, I just really like it. I'm really happy to have another item in my wardrobe that I can wear in so many different ways. I mean, it's a statement piece that can stand alone or be used as an accessory. The construction is also solid enough to be worn regularly and the sheer fabric isn't too heavy, so it's easy to move in. I'm almost 100% pleased with how it came out and that is incredibly rare. So I don't know, a piece like this is just truly Kira catnip. We made it there, folks. We made it to catnip territory. <laughs> Hello! Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this little mini styling segment. I did want to do some more outfits, but I kind of ran out of time. So if you do want to see some more styling content this spooky season, let me know if anyone cares about that. Anyways, in related news, I think I did finally decide on my big Halloween project. If you want to track that project and see work in progress photos and also see like the actual design, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as low as $1 a month. Anyways, I love how this came out. I have virtually no complaints. I think I am getting a little bit closer to my dream of having versatile fantasy inspired clothing in my wardrobe, which is great. As always, the biggest thank you for this video goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozyme, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Lama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Jaconi, Phoenix, Brian, The Cat Bus is Early, and Miss Wicked. I think that's how you say that. What are you getting out of this? Pure chaos. <laughs>